convinced that some of y'all that are parents are not being open and honest about the whole parenting experience. I'm talking about y'all are not open and honest enough about the conception, about the pregnancy, about the delivery, about postpartum and beyond. But y'all know, <laughs> I'm about to get to the bottom of this right now. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. I am your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson. Now, before we get into these five uncommon reasons that people do not share their negative experience about parenting, I need to give y'all a disclaimer. Number one, I currently, at the time of this video, do not have any children of my own. I have tons of God kids. I have nephews young cousins, all of those things, but I personally do not have children of my own. Secondly, I noticed that on this journey of me being single and not having children currently, I noticed that there's so many parents and people, fam my family, friends, and all of those people included who don't always tell the full truth about their parenting experience. And I'm talking about everything. I'm talking about from conceiving, I'm talking about the pregnancy, the delivery process, I'm talking about postpartum, what happens after and beyond. And this goes from male and female perspectives. And I started to think like, why is this? It kind of feels like this secret society, even though women have been and couples have been having children for gazillions of years. I just feel like no one has ever sat down and broke down what really goes down. And I understand that pregnancy and having children is a gift from God. And, you know, there's definitely tons of positive things about that. But also there's some flip side stuff to this that you guys are not sharing with the people who may be going through something similar or even people like me who may experience that in the future and we don't wanna be blindsided. So because over the years, not only have, you know, do I have God kids and nephews and things of that nature, but as a marriage and family therapist, I've worked with young kids, teenagers, toddlers, families, all of these different people. And I know that each family, each story is different, right? But I'm wondering if we shared more about what goes down about being a parent, the realness of being a parent, if things would shift in our culture. I recently seen this video on Instagram and it was a black woman who was sitting in her car with her son who has special needs and he was sitting in the back seat having a complete meltdown for whatever reason. She was sitting in the front, she was recording herself obviously, but she was just bawling and she was crying and she was just like, this is so hard, you know, nobody talks about this. I don't have the support or the resources that are that I need. You know, I don't have a community around me. Nobody told me like she just had a nervous breakdown essentially. And it got me thinking of like, whoa, if this woman, of course, she has a different situation because her son is special needs. But I'm wondering how hard it is just for regular parents who don't, you know, have children with special needs as well. And I'm like, I don't see people really talking about authentically, at least what that experience is like. And so I have a friend who y'all probably know and love. Her name is Shan Booty. She is a YouTuber. She's a sexologist. She is an author. She's a speaker. She's one of my faves. You've probably seen her on all the different media outlets and TV shows. And she recently, well, not recently, but she has two young children. Y'all can go, I'll link her page so y'all can go see my friend. Okay. She has two young children and I love so much her realness about what she shared about both of her pregnancies and how different they were. Now, of course, I got some stuff that I want to share with y'all about, but let me tell y'all the story real quick. So she had her first child, right? Which was planned. She was like, I'm ready to be a mom. Let's do this. She's a married woman. All of those things. She talked about how her feet were swollen. She talked about how the pregnancy was great and she was willing and happy to be a parent, but the pregnancy was a little rough at times. She didn't feel like herself. She was tired, you know, all of these things. And then when she had the second baby, she talked about, I think it was on her Lovers and Friends podcast episode, she was speaking with another woman and she was talking about how she didn't feel excited about her second pregnancy as she did with her first. And she started to feel guilty about that because the second one wasn't technically like planned, so to speak. And so she talked about the ups and the downs. And now that she has two kids that are like 
under three, I believe, at this at the making of this video, she talks about how that impacts her business and how she has to recreate her schedule. And, you know, when the kids are sick, that means she can't work and how that impacted her marriage and the all of these different things. And she was just so raw and so real about it, right? She didn't minimize that being a parent was great, wonderful, and a blessing, but she also kept it real. She talked about how like, this is whack at times, zero out of 10, do not recommend. And I love that aspect. I love that truthfulness, that honesty, that realness, that rawness, because it made me remember and think about how like, oh, this is, this is the process that most people go through at some capacity. And so I was wondering if there were more women who opened up and shared their story like that. How beneficial it would be, right? To other women who are pregnant or have children who feel like they may be alone, right? They may feel like they're the only one going through something or again, even for the women who don't have children yet. And they're like, okay, what is this experience going to be? How is this going to change my life for the good or for the bad? Like what is happening? And so to be honest and to see her go through that journey, I love her. Anyways, let's talk about these five uncommon reasons why people tend to avoid sharing their negative experience around being a parent. The first one is obvious and that's fear of judgment. Many people, probably all people, feel like they do not want to be judged. They don't want their parenting, their parenting skills, what happens, what goes down to be judged or under a microscope by other people. Because every child is different, every family is different. You may be a single parent, you may be a two parent household, you might have a blended family. There's just so many different dynamics and every child has a different personality and temperament and needs discipline very differently than other children. We can't sit up here and judge how somebody else is doing something. Okay, so I think that a lot of parents are so fearful of judgment that people are going to say, well, why are you doing that? I didn't do that with my kids. I didn't have to experience that. Your parenting skills are whack. What? To avoid all of that, they just avoid sharing the negative aspects of it. And they only show <laughs> the glamorized, the happy, the well-behaved, that they did so well in public today that they didn't have a meltdown and start crying and falling over the floor at the mall. Like <laughs> you, they basically just want to show the positive experiences of being a parent. Because let's be real. The real thing is that nobody wants to feel like they're being inadequate. They don't want anyone to say that you aren't a good parent. They aren't a good parent. And so instead of, you know, being honest and open and just saying like, this is what it is today, they avoid sharing at all. Number two, the second uncommon reason that people don't want to share their negative parenting experience is kind of what we already talked about a little bit, but it is because of social media pressure. I think there's a lot of pressure on social media to show up with an amazing family. We have a two parent home. We have 2.5 kids. We have a white picket fence. We have house, car, money. We have it all, honey, to have this little perfectly placed life. In all reality, that ain't real, right? Like people only put the best parts of themselves and their lives, their children and their family on social media. Nobody, it's rare that I see somebody literally putting their child on social media in the middle of a meltdown or in the middle of the worst case, you know, scenario. And I love this whole like Instagram thing. It's not necessarily about parenting, but it's kind of like, they'll show the glamorized Instagram version of something. And then they'll be like, well, this is what happened in reality. Like when they're taking pictures abroad or, you know, on trips and they're trying to give, you know, those infamous shots of being by the ocean or whatever. And it looks perfect on Instagram. But in reality, there was a whole bunch of people around. You have to crop out some people and get the different angles and things of that nature. That's what happens in regards to parenting too. <laughs> I think there is an Instagram version of that. Like people put the perfect, well put together version, but then in reality, it was chaos trying to get that shot it was chaos trying to get a family picture with all of your toddlers and your kids and you being pregnant and all of these it was a mission right and so i think social media has put additional pressure on people to just show up almost like perfect and like you don't have any flaws or mistakes and your family's perfect and your kids are always well behaved and honey <laughs> We know that's not true at all. The next one, number three of why people choose 
to not share their personal negative parenting experiences is because of cultural stigma. I know I've seen a post on TikTok. I mean, clearly I'll be on social media all the time because I'm giving y'all all the social media examples, but <laughs> I've seen a post on TikTok and it was about a, I believe, a Nigerian woman, I believe, or some, some part of Africa where she went and took her baby that was less than one years old to her mom's house. And then when she came back, her baby's hair was cut with scissors. And so, the whole process was filmed and all of that stuff. But people were like ripping her to shreds in the comments of like, well, why would you leave your baby? Why would the grandmother, you know, cut her hair without your permission? And da 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 da, why are y'all using scissors? And she's not even one years old. Yeah, what are you doing? And the mother was trying to explain like, this is a part of our culture. Like, this is what we do. Like, this isn't uncommon for us. This is normal for the grandparents to have and to give their grandchild their first haircut with scissors. And it helps with like regrowing of the hair and you know, cradle cap and all of those different things with the scalp. But people like rip her to shreds, right? And so I believe, especially if you come from a different culture, that sometimes the parenting practices, the way you discipline, the way you do, you know, your parenting skills may look very different from like the westernized um, how to say it, like the westernized culture or what we do here as far as parenting. And every culture has a different perspective. Even black people <laughs> parent different compared to our white counterparts. Like, let's be honest. And so I think that also puts people in a position to be like, yeah, I don't really want to share what we do over here because that might be deemed as abusive or wrong or weird or we didn't set a boundary or a safety issue. And they're like, no, this is actually normal and it's perfectly fine for our culture and the way that we do things. So I think that's also another reason why some people choose not to share their experiences around parenting because they will definitely be judged. The next uncommon reason that people do not share their negative parenting experience is because of parental guilt. So let me break it down to y'all. So when, especially our Western society, people always feel like you have to be this perfect parent, that you have to speak positive thoughts only about your kid, about your experience, like everything just has to be well taken care of. And you know, if you say anything negative or contrary, or if you had a bad day or you had a negative experience or you and your kid wasn't on the same page or he didn't listen, like it makes you feel like you're inadequate. It makes you feel like you're not a good parent. And this is what we call like mommy guilt or like even daddy guilt, right? Because you're feeling remorse from having negative experience about your parenting experience, right? Say for instance, you're having a horrible freaking week. Your kid is just acting up. He not listening or she's not listening. They're having tantrums. They're crying. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. They're acting out at school or whatever is happening. It's just a week, right? That you might feel like, dang, my kid has been acting up all freaking week. Now that's a reflection on my parenting skills, so to speak. But then also I feel bad about thinking bad about this whole parenting experience. You know, like that parental guilt of being like, I don't like my kid today. <laughs> Listen, and that's something that parents would probably never say because they're like, oh my God, I could never. Sometimes, just like you don't like your partner or your husband or your wife some days because they're getting on your nerves, the same goes with kids. Like, let's keep it real. This, is all, this video is all about keeping it real. Let's be honest, sometimes y'all don't like y'all kids and that's perfectly fine. Can I scream? That's perfectly fine. You do not have to feel like you absolutely like your kid 100% of the time. You might love them, but there will be moments. There will be tons of moments where you just don't really prefer them. Like, you know what? I just need to be alone. Let me take a break. Go be with your daddy. Like, go. Like, I can't deal with you right now. And I want us to normalize that because that will give mom the space and even dads the space to be like, okay, I'm not perfect, so be it. My kid's not perfect, so be it. That doesn't mean I'm a bad parent. That doesn't mean they're a bad kid. It just means in this moment, in time that is not inclusive of our whole parenting experience, things are not going well and I need a breaky break. So let's normalize our thoughts and our feelings around the parenting experience even if you might think it could be seen as something negative. Let's be clear, I'm not talking about abuse or we're not talking about anything unsafe. 
okay? Because I'm a therapist in real life. I don't play those games. But let's just talk about things that may not feel good all of a sudden and being able to express that freely. I just want to free up somebody right now to tell you, you do not have to enjoy every aspect of being a parent 100% of the time. Let me normalize that for you. Just take that weight, sure, take that off your shoulders right now. You do not have to feel like this is 100% amazing all of the time. And if you feel like you do, chances are you are carrying a weight that you should not be carrying and you need to put that load down and you need to unpack it and talk to somebody about that for real. And last but not least, number five, the fifth reason why people don't want to share their negative parenting experience. I should have probably put this at the top of the list, but it is a fear of child services, okay? Social services or whatever y'all call it, DCFS, which is what we call it over here. Like basically calling the people on you for some type of neglect, unsafe or something of that nature. And as I mentioned before in this video, I'm not talking about anything that is unsafe, that is abusive or any of those things. I'm just talking about the days that parenting is not giving what we thought it should give. Okay. <laughs> and just being honest about that experience. But I completely understand how sharing or talking about experiences that may seem unfavorable or you might feel like somebody might judge you. You're right. There may be somebody that might call and say, Hey, look, my neighbor's kid has been screaming for the last three hours and I don't know what's going on over there. Can you please come and check on them? Right now, you next, next thing you know, the police and the social worker and everybody else showing up at your door. Or, you know, when in all reality, your kid was just sick and they were just crying nonstop and it had nothing to do with abuse, right? And so that's just an example of how certain people don't understand what's going on in your own home <laughs> because people definitely should mind their own business. But at the same time, we want to make sure that children are safe. So essentially, these types of parents just don't want any of their parenting skills or the things that they do or the things that they don't do to be seen as neglect, child abuse, unsafe. And then they may literally catch a case for something that shouldn't even be a thing. And so people choose just to kind of like keep a tight lip and not share some of those negative experiences because they do not want any problems. They don't want any smoke. So look, let me give y'all my final thoughts on this because it's a wrap. So look, I honestly was very hesitant about doing this video because I was like, look, I don't want the parents to try to come for me. Then they are gonna be like, Keandra, you ain't even got no kids. You need to be quiet. I just wanted to share what my experience has been in my community and my family and my friends and all of the millions and gazillions of people, especially women who have children, but I don't see them really sharing about the real and raw and dirty of like what's really going on. And it almost makes other people feel unprepared about what could potentially lie ahead. So I know that this is a complex journey. There is no, honey, there is no parenting book. Well, there are parenting books, but you don't get a parenting book when you have a kid <laughs> because nobody knows how your kid is going to be, their personality, their temperament, their style, their discipline, like no communication. Nobody freaking knows ahead of time what they're going to get into as a parent. And you might think, you know, because you may even have other kids and, you know, all of these things, but you, every child is different which means the parenting journey is going to be different. And so I just want us to get into a space of normalizing the negative or the bad or the not so good along with the positive. And give them, I don't want to call it equal weight, but give, give us a little bit of what the raw and the real is too, okay? Not just glamorize it and put it on this pedestal like, I, my pregnancy was so amazing and I was glowing and my feet never got swollen and my nose never spread and I was a perfect delivery and I just pushed one time and the baby just flowed out and they were perfect and it was no blood. Chow, stop lying. <laughs> Stop lying to the people. So my thought is just to honestly encourage you guys to be more open, more honest, and just really share the real and raw and the dirty of what goes down. And also too, hopefully there will be a space, okay, of other, and I know there's parenting groups and mom groups and things of that nature, but hopefully there's a space where you can feel loved on and you can feel supported and you have a community around you that says, hey, yo, my kid got on my nerves this week. 
he wasn't doing X, Y, and Z. What should I do? And nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's going to place blame on you. Nobody's going to call child services on you, but they're going to give you the tips and the support and the empathy that you will need. Thank you for watching another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. I hope something that I said in this video was helpful. Feel free to share this with another parent or someone who is a parent to be that may need this conversation. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and guess what? I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.